Hey everyone, welcome back to the PC Perspective Podcast. We're at episode 707. This is being recorded on January 18, 2023. I'm Sebastian Peek. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. <clears throat> I'm Brett Van Spurnberg. And you can help support us. Support the PC Perspective Arts, because this is art. It's performance art. It's it's happening live right now. You're watching it if you're watching the stream. And uh, otherwise, thank you to everybody listening. Thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash PCPer. Yes, you can be part of an elite group that supports including this. Including. Including oh, okay. Jeff, Jeff B. B. Jeff B. Especially tonight. Especially Jeff B. Actually, him more than anybody really tonight. It's really partially all about all about Jeff B. Right now. Yeah, and you've, I moment. mean, just even if all you're doing is sending a few bucks Josh's way indirectly to support yeah. Burger of the Week, because yeah. that is, of course, our first segment. Moving to Laramie, it costs Laramie. money. It's like you know that that, that it's a visit after inflation. You know, it's it's a it's a eighteen nineteen dollar endeavor. I do that four <laughs> times a month, sometimes even five, depending on when the first of the month drops off. Crazy how that works, but uh, you know this one is uh, it's a classic. It's one of the more popular ones, and there's a good reason it's because it's good. It's called the Naughty. The Naughty has two patties for a half pound of meat. This one came with lettuce, tomatoes, and onions, which actually really added to it. It was nice. It's uh, covered with uh, bacon, freshly cut jalapenos, uh, chipotle ketchup, something else I'm missing here. Uh, and, yeah, it's uh, it's really stinking good. Uh, it's, 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 you know, really one of the classics. And the fries came out fantastic. Today, perfectly and it's crispy. So naughty, they spank that bun. That they, bun looks well. I mean, they spanked. they wrap it up, right? They wrap it up to keep it warm, and so it crushes the bun. And so, you know, visually, it's not that appealing. However, uh, it was the taste that that counts. And in this case, the naughty really delivered. Uh, it did come with American cheese, but I had them change it to pepper jack, and I think that made all the difference in the world. I took the road less traveled. You know what I'm saying? Let's move on to the news of the week. And one of the top stories of the last few days, back on January 12, Intel made it official and put it on sale. The KS, the so-called Kentucky Shroud Edition, although I think kind of unofficially now because, you know, Ryan, he's on the GPU marketing side of things. This is a CPU product, but it's the first six gigahertz desktop processor in history this is a, a world first the i9 13900ks and it's 700 dollars if you can find it for that because when i was looking it was like 749 but uh that's their official price max turbo of six gigahertz on two cores i believe and otherwise the same stat i mean if, if you know the 13900k then you're very familiar with this product you have 24 total cores eight performance 16 efficient now this one raises processor base power somewhat surprisingly from 125 to 150 who would have guessed oh. when you're going up to six huh. gigahertz that you would need more power i have yet to experience this product and see what it could actually draw under load although i suspect it won't be that much in like a gaming load scenario with only two cores hitting six gigahertz but still mm ask and you shall receive i reached out to intel and i have one. oh my oh, oh my. my so how nice can, can we hear the crinkly plastic again that's sort of a, yeah <laughs> yeah it's nice nice but intel had more to release including the fourth gen xeon scalable processors comma max series cpus i think it's more than one release here yeah my understanding is this is only 50 SKUs, so this is a small release from Intel. Yes. <laughs> this is a press I'm release. Not, this is published at uh, um, <laughs> videocards.com, but Intel press release. So delivering better node and data center performance, new or enhanced capabilities, four tile and monolithic architecture options. Infield 5chan? Is that a really bad uh, uh, 
website to go to, 5chan? <laughs> <laughs> There's worse. There are yeah, some they, questions out there as to who this processor is really for with so many, what might be argued, better contenders available. Uh, yeah. People that hate AMD. Okay, there's that. The one thing I did read about these that is sort of interesting is that they're trying to gear these towards application-specific solutions like um, certain AI processing or stream working or telecom industry. Well, Might yeah, be, it's, it's, all, it's all built-in accelerators. Yes, built in accelerators. That's, that's the phrase. Yep. yep Look yep. at all oh, okay. these views. That's so the a reason. Lot of yeah. uh, only 50. It's only 50. I don't know why we. Yeah, it's only 50. 50. That's not much. Okay, so at least it's broken down by category. You have general purpose, mainline general purpose, liquid cooled general purpose, single socket general purpose, long life use general purpose. Oh, it says IoT. So, yeah, small, low power. And then you've got. Oh, I Wait, see what you're saying about Apple. An IoT Xeon? Isn't that weird? Uh, you yes, have- that is. Now, if you think about it, that could be for like telecom, remote placement. But no, because then know, you have your, sort of your, your uh, like your edge devices sort of slash thing? networking optimized ones are separate. So yeah. I do see that. Cloud optimized. Oh. Hmm. It, clue me into this. What is IaaS? Information as a service? Or is that an, no. <laughs> infrastructure oh, as infrastructure. a service? Infrastructure. Yes. Infrastructure, right. yes. Okay. So it's like, you know, a dedicated, and as Josh pointed out, an accelerated application living on that, maybe on the edge of your network or very, yeah. very Does Intel do stuff. certifications? To, uh, I need to, you know, <laughs> have to go through a, a course to learn the difference between the bronze, You know, this is actually silver, gold, gold 6000. The more, the more I think about this, the more interesting this actually kind of becomes because it's not just servers, it's not just network devices it's not just switches and routers i mean they're doing some really interesting and very focused things and you know what they may not make a huge amount of money but with as connected as we're getting and where they're seeing workloads going they may need all those 52 stinking skews to actually make a dent into you know what was you know kind of more you know, FPGA possibly uh, yeah. type applications and stuff that, you know, they can they can throw their things in there and do it uh, more efficiently, um, faster than an FPGA. FPGA is like an order of magnitude slower in uh, a lot of things that you could do an actual ASIC to where you design that fully to accelerate that. So, huh. If they've got the uh, workforce, which they do, and the engineers, um, they could be tapping into some interesting areas that uh, previously they had not with these products. And so while it's easy to make fun of them, uh, looking at where these things are aimed, I wonder if they may be a little ahead of the curve in addressing some needs that we didn't know that we really had. Hey, speaking I of... Have a uh, point. Yeah. I do. Different needs yeah. in addressing things. Some of these uh, address memory differently, like high bandwidth memory, for example. Socket scalability, core count frequencies. Three unique die packages for unique market needs, as Intel says in the slide here. So they have the four tile architecture for your scalability, core counts. You have your mainstream, which is the monolithic die, which hit the highest frequencies and have the lowest latency, of course, because you don't have to worry about inter tile latencies and then you have the four tile but it's hbm so of course higher bandwidth yeah. memory just don't call me a chiplet i i think this is one of their first chiplet outage uh, outings actually yeah if you look deeper yeah they just sort of don't call it that tm chiplet tm yeah. right look nvidia <laughs> tried to to make gpu an exclusive thing when the geforce Mm -hmm. first came out but it became adopted by the industry it'll be a chiplet eventually it's just it sounds right it's catchy can you really trademark it i don't know but you know what intel has always hated glue except when they use it right penny d exactly yeah no it's a glue for a while too they they didn't like solder either for a long time so whatever (laughs) Well, no, only when other people used it. When they used oh, it, it was uh, fine. All right, let me get out. Let me get out my Bible here. It's, it's time. Uh, you got to cross that thumb. 
You that's, got to cross the thumb. Look, look, look at the top yeah. of your screen. There's no difference between the two people at the top of your screen. Let me try to turn. One isn't wearing a turtleneck. They look the same. Stop. Okay. Stop. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Brett, are, are you are you warmed up? Are you ready? Uh, I could talk a little little bit, <clears throat> but uh, dive into it. Let's go. Okay. Hey, this M2 Pro and M2 Max ne- next generation stuff is really going to be taking the creative world by storm here. I mean, they've upped the CPU count to or the core count to twelve. Yeah, I think in the lower... We're uh, talking M2 about Apple, Pro. by the way. M2 Pro and yeah. M2 Max released. Apps, absolutely. Um, let's see. I think the low end is coming with uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM now that's shared amongst the, I think, amongst the uh, the GPU and the CPU. Well, it depends on what you're getting it in because I noticed that the Mac Mini does not ship with anywhere near that much memory. Yeah, it seems like they've really geared the the pro uh, side of this towards the their portables uh, and the pro the MacBook Pros rather than the Mini. The Mini they've sort of and they priced it accordingly. You know, jumping around here a little bit, the the pricing it's what, of five ninety nine for the yeah, base the, Mini. Yeah, which is yeah, back kind of back to where it was when they first launched the Mac Mini. If you remember back in the G four era, it was four ninety nine. So it was the, it was a five hundred dollar Mac. Bring your they had like this B Y O. Bring your uh, own peripherals. M- I mean, what, what did they call A- it though? M or something like bring your own keyboard and mouse. Mm-hmm. And it was monitor, monitor keyboard and mouse. Yeah, and it was four ninety nine. But that was for the now, base to, G four. To, to pop your bubble, mm-hmm. how much would what? it cost you to order it with two terabytes of NVMe? <laughs> Their pricing is that the pricing is just so so terrible. Now it's, I admit yeah, I went and priced three hundred dollars. From going I, from a 256 gig uh, to two terabytes storage, eight, storage eight is terrible. But Josh, it's, I, the, it's industry. I, OWC leading is storage. doing well. <laughs> it's industry leading uh, innovative storage in a capa- and a capacity. Yes, a OWC industry. thanks you for that. It's a unique form factor that's just by design incompatible with anything else on the market. Jeremy, you're not adding any memory to these. There are no slots, so forget it. It comes with whatever no, it comes with. No, them. you can not add more memory to these, Jeremy. You oh, I see what you not. did there. Ooh. I see what you did there. Stop it. Uh, stop it. But yeah, stop of course, the, I mean, just like any other M processor from Apple, these have that unified memory architecture. So you get this big chunk of available memory, which you can allocate to graphics or, you know, regular CPU compute or any mixture of the two. But of course the M2 Pro that only has uh, 32 gigs is 200 gigabytes per second. And then the one with more channels doubles that. So 400 gigabytes per second with the up to 96 gigabytes on the M2 Max. I think the mini lowers that to a hundred. I don't think they have the multiple <clears throat> they channels have 200 like that on the mini. Oh, the, I thought there was like maybe two versions on that. But anyway, they're crowing about it being so much faster than their previous generation i9, which is now like two generations old. But they're talking about it being 80% faster than their last i9 MacBook Pro. But is that really a fair comparison that it's like two generations old? But 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 there are a lot of people on Intel uh, MacBook true, Pro true. still. Partly for Very software true. compatibility and partly just because, you know, the not wanting to move over to a new Mac that you, you paid $4,000 for a MacBook Pro... And now they're saying this one is this much faster. Honestly, even the M1 era MacBook Pro would have been better than the Core i9. Yeah, or, I mean, the Core i9 ran really, really hot. Workloads. Yeah, because of overheating and, issues. Mm-hmm. So let's look at the Mac People Mini. People tend to keep, their, keep, to keep their Macs a long time anyway, so that's another reason why. Anyway. Tech specs. So the base one is an M2 with, oh, you're right, 100 gigabytes per second. And then you have to that's move up to the M2 Pro for 200. I thought, okay, they don't all have the M2 Pro. So the, the base one... For five ninety nine, you're only getting the base M2, not the M2 Pro. That's fine. I mean, it's still way faster than what was available yesterday or the day before on the Mac Mini. So two fifty six storage, eight gigabytes of unified memory. So if you want sixteen gigs of memory, you either have to configure when you order, or you have to get the thirteen hundred dollar model. But I guess Oy. comparing it to that Mac Studio, which was the smaller form factor desktop, $2,000. Yeah, that was, I guess that's really geared towards, Mini. this is really geared, geared towards people who are doing a lot more, a little bit more professional work rather than your occasional, you know, I just need a computer just to do I, web surfing and stuff. I don't know. It's tempting because I, I have used uh, DaVinci Resolve, for example, on an M1 iMac and it is I'm snappy, sure it's fast. And yeah. the export, mm-hmm. because it's hardware accelerated, 
export was significantly faster than the Core i9 that I was using for that task. So I don't have it anymore, but I test drove it for a little while. And I'm like, this is uh, very tempting. Could just use it as like a photo editing, video editing workstation. Even the little Mac Mini for $599 would be a very impressive machine. It'd probably be depressing for somebody who bought a 2019 Mac Pro to see what even like a $1,300 oh, right. Mac Mini can do with the same software. It's at 2019 hey. would be a $3,500 to $5,500 product. Correct. Yes. Or yeah. N- yeah. N- way more. Like the, the wheels alone. Wheels. The wheels alone yeah, are like $10,000. Hey, we're, we're not the putting the wheels, wheels on it. $900 or something. Yeah. We're not yeah. putting the wheels on it. Now, the 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 meme, or I don't know, the, the thing going around social media the other day after this announcement was, uh, if you go to Apple's website, you'll get trade-in value for the Mac Pro. If you put in the highest built-to-order configuration of like $52,000, it'll show you that you can get $970 in trade-in credit on an Apple uh, <laughs> card. Which is less? Ow. You can't even buy the feet for that because those are still nine ninety nine. Yeah. So, but the good news is you could actually bring in a cheese grater and pass that off as one of the uh, Mac Pros. Okay, now you're just making fun. More the, importantly, the Mac, come on, yeah, no, you remember the cheese a, grater one? Is a beautiful of do. piece of industrial design. It looks like something that should be on exhibit in a, a modern art museum somewhere. But as a practical sure desktop solution, as a workstation. It's completely overpriced and underpowered. So for way less money, I mean, I I, I am alarmed at how much the ThinkStation, I've, I'm going to have this review published soon, but I have a ThinkStation P620 here. It has the highest SKU Threadripper Pro in it, the 5995 or whatever it is. W, yeah. Yeah. And this thing is all kitted out, uh, tons of memory. It's got the RTX A6000. Uh, workstation GPU in it. Even at full retail at CDW, we're talking $18,000 for this, which seems crazy. But then you look at a Mac Pro, it's like, well, if I wanted a 64 core Mac Pro with this level of graphics horsepower, I'm probably spending $40,000. So, and I know that the part of the whole Apple experience is getting Apple software, but at this point, that stuff is is very max is very Apple Silicon focused. So development and optimization is going to be much much more on like the M M one M two side, True. not so much the Intel side. So no, you can't you can't. Uh, it's it's a dead end to uh, to buy an Intel Mac at this point. Just don't don't buy a Mac Pro unless you're just doing <laughs> it for nostalgia reasons. Get an old trash can. Those are finally affordable. You can buy a trash can on eBay like five, 600 bucks with dual uh, GPUs and, you know, that you And one day in the future, design. it will be worth $10 more than that. Yeah, it will. They, because more and more of them will fail over time due to thermal issues, <laughs> just like the G4 cube. And then it'll become rare. And <laughs> yeah, super then it really get open price. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, the, the GPUs on this, actually, they, for some number of, of small number of cores, they're not terrible. They'll do like 8K. They talk. I don't know if they're all of them do, but they'll do 8K at 60 hertz, 4K oh, yeah, this, at two, yeah, this 240. Way, um, it's amazing. Are good. I'm not knocking them. I mean, if you if you're on a if you have a workflow, a professional workflow that can make use of software that runs on Apple Silicon natively, it's great because they have tuned the silicon to work really really well for that kind of thing. Can we do it? <laughs> yes, yes, we, we can. can. Well, Dell cam, or they hope they cam. Yeah. C A M M. What does it stand for? It's a new acronym. Compression program. attached memory modules. Okay. As in your so memory is squished. Is, is that you know, uh, SO DIMMs have issues with running at high speeds. Yeah. And so DDR5 sixty four hundred is the roadblock. Is it a latency thing or is it due to the traces? The, okay. PCB yeah. size. Resistors, capacitors, yeah, you all name of that. it. And it just it doesn't work after a certain amount of speed just because you can't do it in that form factor. It's like packing in ten pounds of shit in a five pound bag. Yep. 
And that bag is about what? 30 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. Sodiums were about nineties. So it's been a long time, but the, the, the thing that amuses me most about this is last April, Dell just showed up and came out with two of their uh, tie-in precision laptops with this brand new memory standard on it. And they sort of walked up to JDEC and slapped it on the table and said, here you go. Here's the new memory uh, configuration. And didn't even blink. And JDAC, who's been kind of figuring out, you know, how are we going to replace SODIMS? What are we going to do? Uh, looked down on the face and said, you know what? This is a fait accompli. And they have now adopted it. So all 332 companies of JDAC wow. have voted unanimously that CAM is the way forward. For DDR5, this is what it's going to be. It's not bad. Uh, like, this is cam 0.5 the the 1.0 sync should be out next year but yeah if you're looking at laptops that are going to hit ddr6 and decent speeds of ddr6 this is what it's going to be it's an interesting design uh very different from swapping out a a, a sodium nowadays but uh it, it's sort of bolted onto the motherboard and sebastian showed the picture uh and with a heat sink on top of it so it lies flat as opposed to standing up. But this also sort of makes some sense. And it's got a little bit of a standoff. So it'll be interesting to work with this and see how it goes. It seems like a the decent idea. Compression, the compression connector sounds really interesting. It solves yeah, a lot of problems. Right? But, but you obviously have to connect it on there straight. Otherwise... That sound that Sebastian's video from ages ago makes? Crunch. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of memory and terrible sounds, not as bad as me forcing um, an old, I don't remember what it was, like a Semperon onto an LGA 775 pad and crushed it. Something like that, yeah. That metal on metal binding, like nails on a chalkboard sound. That, that final like, squeal. That's that's what you get from motherboards that only have the latching mechanism on one side. Not when you insert, mm -hmm. but when you remove. If you're removing DDR4, DDR5, and it only latches on one side, you kind of pull and it, it starts to bind because you can't lift it straight up. And it's just that, that horrible metal on metal sound. That's why I really yeah. appreciate that there's a couple vendors. I noticed that MSI started doing latches on both sides. I'm like, yes! Because for a while, I think only Gigabyte was doing that on their lower end board. Gigabyte has them both yeah. sides. But yeah, Gigabyte's now, always had them. MSI latches on both sides. And I applaud you, MSI, if you're watching, for doing that. Because it makes it so easy to get them out. If you, if you test a lot of memory, you, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. Our next story. Fascinating. I was, I was, <laughs> thanks, Josh. <laughs> Our next story, real quick, uh, mainly just so I can show off because I was channeling my inner Jeremy. And I said, is a reference XDX giving you the vapors? You may understand that reference. Put your card underwater with AlphaCool. So if they have some new box, these are like 160 euros a piece. And I mentioned that water won't turn into vapor if you block it. Uh -huh. Happening. So yeah, if you have an XTX reference card, you may have heard that those have some issues that are kind of being worked out if they had but not all of them to send not all, you maybe not all of them maybe maybe not all of them are defective who knows mm -hmm. but some of them are and if you just if you bought a reference card because it's easy to get blocks for reference designs then you're in luck because i, I love the subscription from alpha cool i don't know if it was a translation thing or what they're just very blunt because they said that there have been a, numerous optimizations made compared to previous models of their blocks. Quote, in order to dissipate the enormous waste heat of the new graphics card generations in the best possible way, end quote. Mm. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, when you put it like that, the enormous <laughs> waste heat problem, they've addressed it, they say. So there's all sorts of new uh, features, and you can read all about it at uh, AquaCool. They have the pre-orders up on their website. So it's about 172 US dollars for one of these. You can see it all lit up here. So if I had an XTX reference card uh, as a daily driver right now, 
I would probably put in a loop together again this is this is your opportunity to build that custom loop you've always wanted mm-hmm. g skill flare x5 now this is ddr5 6000 cl32 and the, that number matters a lot not the cl so much but this is amd expo memory and that 6000 that's the sweet spot don't worry about going high you want to maximize those fifo buffers you know what i'm saying oh yeah, yeah. so g skill renowned taipei based memory manufacturer with a history of producing Performance-oriented products. This must be a press release, but uh, oh, maybe not. So the the X5. No, it's just quote. Yeah, X5 is uh, that's their AMD stuff, and this is uh, Tech Power has a review of this. They're doing this 6000 Cas32 at 1.35 volts. That's good. I mean, there there are some kits out there that are 1.4. I think they do 1.4 on the one that's Cas30. So, but it uh, and before you move on, it this what? is uh, a little bit of a a tale of warning. Uh oh, a warning of well, what? You look at this the cast like, latency. What you and that's thirty two. The CL thirty two, yeah, yeah, yeah. But look at the other timings. Okay, especially the cycle time. Yeah, the cycle time and especially the bank cycle time is horrific. Is high. Uh, T yes. RAS is ninety six. And uh, TRC yeah. is 135. Yeah. So you're like 32, so, 38, 38, 96. That's, that's whereas nice. a lot of other, th- yeah, a lot of other kits are like 32, 36, 36, 70 something. Mm-hmm. Ha- just about half. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it, it's not just all about the cast latency as much as we do focus on that. But having said that, it's memory. So if you're running synthetic benchmarks, right. yes, that does actually make a difference. Yeah, eight of sixty four is going to always gaming. show that big difference there. Well, not so big, yeah. but it's not even really very big. It's pretty small, even in no, ADA. it's not. Look at the huge differences between uh, the the different memories. Yeah, as in yeah. not yeah. a lot. Yeah, there's not. Let's see. So if you're doing it for benchmarking, it I wouldn't do this one. If you're doing it for gaming, as you can see on this one, literally it's every bit as good as more expensive kits. Are you yeah. implying that the cheapest 6,000 RAM will do you? Is that what you're saying? Pretty you know, much, yeah. Can I just point out that there, there's always going to be some variance when you're benchmarking a game, and it depends especially on whether you're doing manual runs versus can benchmark and how consistent is the can benchmark even, but plus minus yeah. 3 FPS is pretty typical variance. And this is all margin, which error. in this case is like one percent. Because look at the the top. Well, let's see. The second entry here is a gigabyte AORS RGB six thousand kit with CL forties, CL and seventy six, and it's two hundred fifty nine yep. mm-hmm. frames per second. And this one is CL thirty two, and it's two fifty eight point one three. So I, I yeah. think that there was just I mean, that's margin rerun, of error. You rerun that other one, the CL forty kit, and you're going to get the same result. It's because it yeah. was this was more of a probably a GPU bound test okay. and overclocking with the new, uh, Ryzen platform is a bit of a pain in the ass, but if you want to do it, they did actually get the timings down to like 28, 36, 36 or something like that. But I don't know. I think I'm looking at the wrong do spot. Do you, how much of your life do you want to spend waiting on exactly tuning on these new plot? I mean, yeah, I tried and tried. If you like tried. doing it, if you enjoy screwing with memory timings, this actually does seem like a good kit to grab because they did manage to get it significantly tighter uh, after working at it a lot. <laughs> but honestly, it's not that huge of a difference what they got. No, just plug it in. Yeah. Just I, plug it yeah. in. I just want to use the presets. <laughs> just plug it in. I used just to be able to in. tighten up timings and then you had to you know, see if it was going to be stable would it boot all the way mm-hmm. to the OS? Then would it actually complete a benchmark run? Now it's, I can't even get the thing to post if I change the cast latency by two. Exactly, right? And you're just waiting and well, waiting on it to try to train the memory. And like, is it going to mm-hmm. work this time? No. Okay. It failed the post nope. and I have to reset. Okay. Expo you know, XMP. Intel and AMD there you go. hires people to do this nonstop for Ex- like a year. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't reinvent the wheel. Just. Yeah what he said yeah yeah 
Let's pause here for a word from a podcast sponsor. Whoa, what's that charge in your credit card? What does that strange abbreviated description stand for? You stare at that mystery charge on your bank account or credit card statement, wondering if you signed up for something. How long have they been charging you? Probably for something you're not even using. Well, like over 80% of the other people around you, you likely have a subscription to something you've forgotten about. Could be a streaming service to watch that one cool anime show, or some other source of online content you signed up for to get that free trial. How much are these now unwanted subscriptions really costing you? Well, Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Very nice of them. Rocket Money will quickly and easily identify your subscriptions for you so that you can stop paying for the ones you no longer want. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, and on average, they are putting up to $720 a year right back in their pockets. So if you no longer want a subscription, press that cancel button on the app and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. That's some easy money. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash PC Perspective. That's rocketmoney.com slash PC Perspective. Check it out at rocketmoney.com slash PC Perspective. We're back and we're going to button down with the Razer NAGA V2 Pro gaming mouse. Oh, stop nagging me. This oh. looks a lot like that little Corsair mouse from a couple of years. Maybe all mice kind of look. Yeah. They, they look well, mice. Uh, Maybe from this angle that it looked very small. Oh, yeah. that, that angle. Okay. This angle looks different. Look at all the, all the side yeah. buttons. So this is for like your MOBA. Ah, uh, but the, this is why the Naga amuses me because that bunch of buttons there is actually magnetically removable. It comes with three different hot swappable ones. Oh, Jeez. so look at this. Yeah. It's like that Corsair mouse. Yeah. It, so it's technically a MOBA mouse. Okay. So oh, you I want see, a whole bunch of pre-programmable oh. buttons, or you can have the normal one so if you want. Panel this comes off? This seems yes. more sane. The, okay, the okay, so you, okay. you get to choose. Okay, how insane do you want buttons. the side of your mouse to be? Yeah, 12, 12, six buttons there to, you know, a more sane three or four. Yeah. yeah. And I assume it's... Well, I mean, it's well, buttons, Warrior so, still refuses you know, to work with my Hotas. You can do it. It just takes time. A whole lot of precious time going to take patience and time to do patience. it right do it right oh look they have a they include the um palm gonna touchstone take no wait no it's compatible with the palm touchstone oh i'm sorry that's called the razor mm-hmm. mouse dock pro how much spending money do pop. you have to pay for this how much a precious spending, spending money, money? But the the problem with it is that it's generally running at like 250 bucks <laughs> okay it's Duply wow. expensive okay. because it is. In that case, it's got onboard memory. You can reprogram all three of the thumb button sides. Can you do it without registering independently? Uh, God only knows. I don't know. People in the chat are saying you have to register the software to use it. Yeah. So, yeah. What else is new? That's not cool. Yeah. No, I'm just so mad that Mech Warrior refuses to work well with my Hotas, and I'm like, wait, if I have a mouse with that many buttons, maybe I can play it that way. This looks an awful lot like a Intel uh, storage product. The Micron mm. 9400 Pro. This is not a uh, NVIDIA integrated GPU from the 2000s. This is a Micron Enterprise SSD. And you know they mean well, business wouldn't. when it has those those heatsink <laughs> fins integrated. You wouldn't know it. it from the heatsink, but yeah. sure. Yeah. So Well, and funnily enough, if you open up that heatsink... That it's actually going to be full of flash. It's not going to be mostly empty. That's a 30.72 terabyte drive. Hmm. And, that's and that seems impressive. Let's look inside the drive. I mean, for an SSD. Uh, it, and so they use Micron's, uh, the B47R 3-bit flash that we all know about. Uh, Tweak Town, and I did a little bit of Googling. Could not find out what the controller was. Okay. But I, I'm going to guess Fizon just for some reason. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a PCI 5.0. Uh, they're hitting reads and writes over seven gigs gigabits a second. It's. I, I'm sorry. Wait, this is a, this is SATA and it's PCIe 5.0. I, I just didn't see the interface connector. This is a U.3. Oh, yeah. that makes sense. Okay. Yep. So, I see. Yeah, it's enterprise. Yeah. And it's yeah. not your yeah, it's uh, average motherboard's drive. plugin. So it's inexpensive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is going to be cheap, right? Do they even have a price? 
explicit. Uh, I especially, hey, I especially this comes, I, hold on. Tweet really says the, the must 30 have terabyte model. editor's choice, and then they have cross out avoid, cross out oh, consider, should I buy? cross buy, out buy, buy. list, just buy, oh, buy, just buy, buy. buy. Yeah. Use our affiliate link. Oh, buy on Amazon. Amazon. Right Amazon. Now. Let's, yeah. Let me see. Yeah. Well, see. you can't wait. You click the affiliate link. It ain't gonna come up. <laughs> that's the 9300 oh, hey, that's Pro. That's the 9300 that's, Pro. That's only 15 uh, No, that's terabytes. not the same drive. No, it and it's only 15 yeah. terabytes. Mm-hmm. And just but if you can't audio- afford this one, there is a 7.68 terabyte one, which is more modestly priced-ish. And by modest, we mean some fraction of the $2,200 that the 15 terabyte uh, one was priced at. And that's the last generation. That's not even PCI 5.0. So this one's going to be probably mm. half again the price. Mm. I mean, honestly, if you need it, this is impressive. The thing is that unless you're Amazon or someone that big that needs, you know, Q depths uh, of ridiculously deep and absolutely just instantaneous reaction. But if you need that, holy crap. Now, the funny thing is that that I loved about this, it took 150 hours of testing to get this review done. (laughs) (laughs) Because how do you test 30 terabytes of high-speed storage? Let's move sort of into our security corner. Apparently, this one is tangentially security related. I think it's security, but it's up for debate. It's a story at Bleeping Computer. Buggy Microsoft Defender ASR rule deletes Windows app shortcuts. So nice. What is this? Uh, what's all uh, this all about? Well, it's pretty much uh, self describing. Uh, the Windows update started blocking VBA macros, a bunch of Office stuff. It would detect a threat and remove actual shortcuts to various documents on your desktop because Microsoft flagged your Microsoft product as uh, being malicious. It's really a story as old as Windows time where their yeah. blocking routines accidentally define or identify um, software that's benign or useful in a sort of weird way or the, or their own software as being malicious and uh, blocks it. Yeah. So they're protecting now, did you. Did you mean accidentally from or yourself? honestly? <sighs> Good question. I really can't answer that. Anyway, it's happened before it'll happen again. Yeah. Yes. Like everyone in the office 359. <laughs> uh, speaking of services uh, like office 359, Norton LifeLock is a service that you can pay for. Oh yeah. Thank you. Thank goodness Norton is in my life. Now, apparently <laughs> there have been some issues with this. They detected some, uh, like their spin on it, which is Gen Digital apparently owns this. I updated the story with, because their, their spokespeople were. Yes, thank you. They reached out to you, not me. They reached out to me. They reached out to everybody, apparently, because I was seeing the same statement published elsewhere. But anyway, uh, yeah. Formerly. Symantec Corporation and Norton LifeLock, now called Gen Digital, is sending data breach notifications to customers, informing them that hackers have successfully breached Norton password manager accounts and credential stuffing attacks. This is via Bleeping Computer as well. And this was a breach that happened almost two months ago now. Yeah, early yeah. December. Now this, mm-hmm. this, which they're just saying about now. Yeah, the statement that the Gen spokesperson provided. It starts off with the typical, like, our top priority is to help the customers secure their digital lives. Like, okay, thank you. <laughs> Just um, like the I'm commercial. Sorry. What's the problem? I'm sorry. That's so awesome, the way you dip into that. Uh, like it's, <laughs> you really... <laughs> it's systems just, killer. have not been compromised, and they're safe and operational. But as is all oh, too common oh, in today's oh, world, bad actors take credentials found elsewhere, passing the buck, like, like the, on the, the dark, dark, dark web, web. Dark web. <laughs> I'm not I'm paraphrasing here. I'm not directly quoting. And create no, automated but... attacks to gain. A- There's no just now. They're now they're mansplaining the whole thing to me. I feel Yikes. I feel like I'm being talked Yikes. down to. <laughs> yep, you're being diminished. You're There's being diminished. There's this thing called the dark web, and people get stuff from there. Like, well, I know I'm a yeah. T-Mobile customer, so oh, all stuff. You're going to stop there. before the offense on the English language. <laughs> Which was one. Given the prevalence of login credentials available to bad actors today, that's not a thing. <laughs> like that, no. Like that sentence does not prevalence related of to any is rule. No, that is not it. Like 
No, it is extremely yeah. difficult to ascertain any individual or the combined sources of data that were utilized. Josh, All of this your is logins are out there. We just don't know which ones that whether they grabbed right. it. There's so Josh, much. It's it's like a sieve. We don't know what's been lost, and you know, don't worry because they're flagging accounts with suspicious login <laughs> attempts now to proactively Josh. require them to be reset. How's it? How is it proactive <laughs> when you're literally flagging them after the suspicious login attempts? That's being reactive. <laughs> Not just this one is, month, but two months. This is a clearly a reference to Josh's five trend. <laughs> <laughs> I think Josh has had about enough of this segment. Well, we have one. It's one, five chan. One or two more stories here. It is quick. five chan. Five chan is all the the big problem. Oh really? Not four chan. <clears throat> I don't really understand. No, this is five chan. Okay. Five chan. Uh, yeah. Malicious lollipop pie pie packages install info stealing malware. I mean, this the sounds like Python's. It sounds play- playful, but it's not. It's Even like, Python. It's like something it's, a Weebo would yell. Pie pie. <laughs> Oh. Python, is your, Python is your open source friend. No, no, yep. no one can hurt you with Python, right? Oh, uh, nope. Not My repositories true. are safe, right? <laughs> yes, except when your repo has been poisoned. Apparently, not every check in to the repo is always had an opportunity to be cleansed and to be uh, mm. made clean for uh, people to download again and bad actors. And you've heard of them in the previous story, bad actors can occasionally have an opportunity to upload bad malware to uh, repos bad. that would normally seem very friendly. Um, unfortunately, several hundred people managed to download these libraries, which have been cleverly disguised as useful things like HTTP lib or lib HTTP or lib HTTPS. And, uh, I don't know, about a thousand people downloaded this before they caught it, unfortunately. So not even open mm. source that uh, where everybody loves each other is immune to the, you know, hacking world and poisoning the repos, unfortunately. Mm. Speaking of people downloading it's not, things. It's and, not just Microsoft. And, and Sorry, go ahead. Security. Secure boot on uh, certain. Oh, files Microstar regions. International, uh, you yeah, naughty, Microstar naughty boys. International. Now, you know that there's this whole little TPM secure boot requirement for Windows 11 unless you bypass it. And it looks like they're kind of doing that themselves. There's some sort of custom uh, secure boot settings that are enabled by default on more than 290 MSI motherboards, which it's, apparently it's is right a, up to the latest 600 series boards, by the way. What about 700 series boards? I didn't see one on the oh, list. Okay. I saw 600 series. So boards. insecure default UEFI secure boot configuration that allows any OS image to run regardless of whether it is badly signed or missing. This is at Tech Digi Pro. So there's a Polish security researcher named David Potaki. I'm mispronouncing this horribly. I think that's good. Who claims that he did not receive a response despite his efforts to contact MSI minutes before going to the press. Or, or I'm paraphrasing. In all reality, he found out that just about any operating system could be booted on these MSI boards after this particular uh, firmware upgrade. And that's not a good policy. So he did find out where uh, he dug through uh, all of the images, apparently, that they have uh, corrupted in this particular way and set the, hey, let's run anything. Uh, hmm. From a from a uh, uh, an OS image perspective, uh, you can fix this by going in and and altering this fixed media. You can see it on the screen here. Fixed media to I think it's query user or or uh, deny or one of those two. I think is the the recommendation. But basically, MSI changed the default to pretty much run anything that you know, has a bootloader in it. Well, it saves <laughs> a lot of uh, support calls when the system yeah. won't boot. You can you can see where this is potentially something that they were using internally, you know, perhaps yeah, it's as a, probably in a, a, mistake, in a testing framework. Yeah, obviously yeah. it's a mistake. Yeah. I don't think ah, we're rubbing my hands. I've got them all beat. <laughs> we're breaking secure boot for everyone, but because mm, I, I, I disabled secure boot and I disabled TPM so that I don't get Windows eleven accidentally. Yeah. Hey, it's, <laughs> guess what? Here comes Windows eleven, just gonna punch straight through. I, I just Yeah, well. I gave in and bent Not over. Not if I disable the uh, hardware lot. requirements. Moving on to uh, gaming quick hits, but this is more of a... We already covered... A the, slap in the face to uh, Microsoft. It's, it's tangentially... Activision, Blizzard thing it's, before. it's tangentially related. 
Well, I mean, gaming. this is not a new story, but I guess this is an update because it is. Microsoft is likely to receive an EU antitrust warning about its $69 yeah. billion dollar bid for Activision Blizzard. People familiar with the matter said this is via Reuters. So the EU, they're not uh, having it. Some antitrust. Yeah, and on. U.S. Uh, trade agree- trade association is also looking into them. Yeah, it's not going to. Yeah, it's uh, it's not going to happen. I don't know. I mean, they own so much stuff already. So I saw this as a kind of a branching off point to discuss, like, who owns the gaming industry anyway now? I mean, there's so few players left. And yeah, I was sort of surprised when I looked at the graphic. For another day. It can be. Uh, hell, at this I, point, do I own my games now? This. or uh, am practically I just renting no. them? It, the, it is surprising out there to find out who is really owning the gaming industry. Now, the, the upper left-hand corner, Tencent, with the green border, it's only a percentage of. So Tencent only owns a portion of Epic, for instance. But Sony, obviously, in there with Naughty Dog, uh, Insomniac, um, you know, a dozen How other ones. How does Valve Microsoft still course. rate? Yeah, actually, Valve is like second tier in here. with, And then they list a lot of the games uh, that are, you know, When's like the last Dota time they put out a game? Portal, Half-Life. It's been a long you time. You know, that's, it's like Dota. Yeah. All they do is distribute a game at a yeah. 15 to 30 percent royalty fee. I have to yeah, say that in the list, fine. In, in the list of major Valve games is the word S T E A M. That doesn't seem like a game to me, but maybe it is to them. I like I'm that. I'm not sure. But I'll, I mean, Tencent. <laughs> When's Ricochet 2 going to come out? Come on. Tencent, <laughs> they look like it occupies a small, you know part of this like equal to sony but i mean look at the games fortnite league of legends i mean isn't that half the gaming industry right there i don't know microsoft has sucked up 343 with halo and now activision and they've got i mean they've got a big chunk as well Mm -hmm. yeah blizzard i mean blizzard as well now although they didn't ruin blizzard blizzard was already ruined who wants to hear somebody ramble subjectively about their opinion of an audio product? Hey, I'm curious about these speakers that they wouldn't ship to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, right, you're in wouldn't. Canada. I mean, How heavy so are they? They, they look kind of heavy. They're, they're not as heavy as I made them look in this, uh, you know, dramatic oh. <laughs> shot where I had the camera low to make them look taller than they are. Uh, you added price. extra gravitas. Mm-hmm. Mono price. It this does. It does. It's a good shot. T3BT. Which are, depending on which specification I was reading, either 40 or 50 watt speakers. I believe they are 50 watt speakers. But there, were some, there was some confusion about the actual specifications of these, which I will get into. But it's a nice pair of what you would kind of call, I guess, near field monitors. They're small for bookshelf speakers. They're more like satellite sized. But they have decent, uh, you know, uh, full range drivers, and you have a, a silk dome tweeter of uh, some three quarters of an Was inch. Was it three and a half inch drivers? Uh, I think so. Let me look at the specifications here. Let's look. Well, well it says three, three but I mean, I, that's a very that's modest an inside measurement number. Yeah. yeah, I think that's internal because if you count the surrounds, mm. these are easily three and a half. Uh, as I wrote in this review, gaming headsets are popular, but what about speakers, man? If you don't have to keep the volume down, you will. You may actually get more for your money from a pair of speakers. These are hundred dollar speakers, one hundred dollars when they're not on sale. I saw them on sale for seventy nine bucks over the holiday, and uh, they sound pretty good. These are very full sounding speakers for their size. It's a simple two channel system. You don't have any subwoofer. There's not even a sub out, which was one complaint from a comment that I. That's a valid complaint, but uh, there's a lot of inputs on them. You have balanced um, TRS jacks. You have Stereo uh, RCA input, as well as the 3.5 millimeter input on the front. That's the aux in. Here's the interesting thing, though, in this design. I've seen speakers from the likes of Roland that have all the stuff on both speakers, like internal amplifiers Mm -hmm. on both speakers. This one has all of that on the primary, and then the secondary is just your standard spring terminal speaker wire on the back, and that's it. There's a passive uh, crossover inside. Probably the biggest, uh, I guess, point of differentiation between these and other monitors is that they claimed that these were bi-amped. By that, I mean there was a separate amp going to the woofers and the tweeters in both speakers. So I emailed my monoprice contact. 
finally after CES, she got back to me and she said, you're right. These are not by amped. We're going to be changing that uh, literature. So they're still good. They're still powered desktop speakers with a 50 watt amplifier in the primary one. They don't, they're not by amped. Sorry. And I don't think it matters. But anyway, uh, getting to the subjective impressions. They're not they're, by. They're, that looks like a, like a, almost like a carbon or a texture in front of them. It has a carbonish look to it, yes. If you care about what I think about the sound, they sound a little warm. As in, there's not quite as much, uh, it's not bright. Just for comparison, because I don't own a lot of actual computer speakers. I usually use desktop speakers and an integrated amp. This uh, set of Gigaworks, uh, the T20 Series 2 from Creative, I do have on hand. I have a set of those T20s. They sound great. They're very much in that kind of like the Bose Companion 2 size, but they have a brighter sound. I Uh, I added a sub to the T20s and that really rounded them out. But yeah. yeah. The T20 is surprisingly evenly matched with this monoprice speaker they're very similar uh bass response is very close even though the speaker driver is smaller with the t20 but overall because the tonal balance of the monoprice speaker is much more towards the lower mid-range they sounded warmer so if you like that kind of warm round sound without the bright high end the monoprice is the way to go and the speaker cabinets are well enough damped they did make their best effort at reducing uh, resonance and vibrations <clears throat> and they did a good job so you put oh, there's the, only so much you can do with a ported design that's going to resonate. So yeah, I mean, and the port does help a lot with the base, but it also is going to be particular about where you place it. The closer you can get to a rear wall with a back ported speaker like this, the more bass is going to reflect back at you. So if you're just kind of out there, then you're not going to get the <clears> maximum <throat> uh, bass impact. But it was still more than I was expecting, and it, they're it helps that they have so much power on tap. Fifty watts is is pretty good for something this small. And for a hundred dollars, like my only real complaint about these, I didn't care about the bi amp thing. Like I, they're just standard amplified speakers. They look fine. They don't take up a lot of space on the desk. They're like five and a half inches. I should have gotten into this. Let's actually talk about something. Yeah, they're five and a half by eight by five nine. Yeah, someone asked, so I just looked it up. Five and a half inches wide, eight inches tall, just under six inches deep. So if. I think the T20s cost more, by the way. T20s are about $60 on Amazon currently. Oh, I thought they were more. Oh, okay. The T40s are more. T40s are the next one. The only real issue with these is that uh, the headphone output on these is uh, not good. It's, I think, significantly worse than just plugging into any standard front panel Mm. on your PC. So don't use that. Oxen was okay, but whatever headphone amp was driving that headphone jack there is not great. You so, think the THD is just off the charts on that headphone? No, like the, there's no channel separation is not good. The, oh, okay. It, it's nothing about it. No, it's probably just fed off of the uh, speaker. Anyway, I did try pairing it. Bluetooth pairing process was okay. It's, it's just Bluetooth. It's standard Bluetooth. It sounds okay. The standout feature of these is just the warm... Price. Sound, big sound. Oh, and it, when, when it goes down to like 75 hertz, right? So they claim 75, they're very really... conservative. It goes down yeah. to 60. It goes down oh, to wow. 60. Yeah. It's only, I would say it's probably minus 6 dB at that point. But when I was doing um, frequency sweep testing, yeah. there's nothing at like 20, 30, 40, you start to hear it, 50, and then by 60, it's noticeable bass. And it isn't until you get up to the 80 to 100 hertz range that it, it really hits that. I think that must be the the port tuning is right around 100 hertz or something because it gets significantly louder there. There's no uh, tone controls on these. So, yeah, you would have to do software EQ if you Mm -hmm. want to adjust the way that these sound. Unlike the T20, which has a treble and bass adjustment. Yes, it does. Hmm. So, but yeah, I mean, if you were... One other thing about these, too, if you look, the uh, tweeter is in a... It has a waveguide, which does help with the Mm -hmm. blending. These these are are well-balanced speakers. Far beyond what you might expect. Anyway, I said I gave it the silver award, and I said it has a compelling mix of connectivity and sound quality. And definitely recommend if you can find them for the holiday sale price of seventy nine ninety nine that they were going for. It is time for picks of the week. Josh, please <clears throat> get us Me. started. Uh, you know, I bought this a couple of years ago for the wife. We hardly ever used it, and then we kind of rediscovered it. 
and it's from the instant pot people it's it's their version of an air fryer and it's relatively inexpensive at 119 bucks mm-hmm. uh it's got a rotisserie in there uh you know i cut up uh potatoes put them in that rotisserie cage put a little oil on them and uh come out with wonderful wonderful french fries uh reheating leftover food is fantastic in an air fryer like this and uh, they make it very easy you know they've got the touch controls that do all kinds of different uh, things that are pre-programmed in and uh, it's just inexpensive it's well built and uh, yeah I, I, I don't understand why we didn't use it more it's so much better than a microwave it's not even funny Josh uh, what kind of smell comes off of yours as I own this exact unit um, it smells a little odd when yeah. you're using it, but the food that comes out doesn't have that smell to it. Which no, it is doesn't. But yeah, the exhaust nice. out of the back. Yeah, I, get, I think it's because of the plastic top. Yeah, I get the, if you've ever had the bag of bread get too close to the toaster when you're making your toast <laughs> in the morning, it's yeah. that melting plastic yep. bread bag smell. Okay, I know that yeah. smell. And it's, yeah, but uh, the, uh, the food does not yeah. taste like that thing. Hey, thankfully. Jeremy, your pick this week. Uh, I'm going to go for something that Josh usually does because it was about the best deal that I could find today. Uh, Canada Computers, 100 bucks off for any racing fans out there. A nice Thrustmaster. It, it, it's not quite as amazing as some of the ones that Josh has reviewed, but uh, it does have some very interesting uh, features to it. It does come with the pedals. So you're not just getting the racing wheel. You can uh, add on with a shifter and handbrake and such, which is a little more expensive. But, hey, if you're into the driving sims and you're in Canada, where it's ridiculously expensive to buy a gaming devices like this or a throttle and, uh, joy- a throttle and joystick, that's actually not a bad deal for it. I literally have not seen that cheaper in- since... Uh, the 2000s sometime and that was a much older version and in american money that's <clears throat> what like 250 bucks or something uh, 220 320 <laughs> yeah. excellent uh brett your pick this week uh i wanted to pick something with the word pop in it so i started with popcorn and i like popcorn and that was pretty good what about pop mm, and pop charts and then and then i thought maybe like pop music i thought that was pretty good as well uh and then i thought oh you know what this is a computer show why don't i go with pop os and then i'm like no i've talked about that a whole bunch but instead i went with the fractal pop rgb case instead so uh my next uh build is going to be Ooh. in the recently kent reviewed fractal design pop air rgb black black tempered glass with clear tint case and fractal does just a bang up job with how they arrange their cases it's just so nice i i've taken it apart i, I the instructions are just so well they do out. really nice manuals it's really excellent manuals i have it around here somewhere i'll grab it. it's right over there i'll grab it in a second but anyway th- this this case is awesome for how small it is kent did a review i think uh he thought had some positive thoughts at it as well again and this fits with my i want to do something with their pop in it so this is biggest this is my biggest feature by far obviously here we are this came out last year i think 2022 but we're in 2023 and it's a new case you can buy with five and a quarter inch bays. They are concealed. <gasps> what? In Correct. A hidden compartment. Correct. Josh. Josh. Five, five, are you five, kidding me? Five, it's oh, the one. Oh, two. Two. Five and a quarter inch bays. Now, by default, okay. it comes with a little Not storage just one. Drawer. You can pull that puppy out of there and put I'll, your I'll be in my bunk in there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. There it is. <clears throat> Oh, that's this. just too sexy for. And and this wow. is a small. This is a small case. Okay, see the number ah, of slot yeah. oh, availability yeah. slots. Four or five, four. Yep, yep. Just four. just almost big enough for the Nitro okay. Plus, I think. The 
what I wanted, what was especially attractive was that it kept the GPU just off of the basement far enough where it could get air. It, it pulls it up with an ITX board. Okay. Or, I mean, any, anything with a, you know, the 16X yeah. slot yeah. is going to pull it up. So uh, this is a, like MATX Max, but anyway. Okay. Front. But there's front multiple sizes. I mean, the whole Pop series yes, has nice. uh, the same design Don't care. language. Yeah. And. I don't care. He's got five and a quarter. But they all do. I think all the pop five and a quarter uh, cases have the five and a quarter inch base. Um, and it has a little like a tag on the side of it, like a little fabric tag. Let me show that to you. I oh, just, I okay. Pulled it off and... an important. Uh... What Why happened you... to a sound? Yeah, he, you're muted now. No, you you must have. Uh, what did you, you touch? Hit something. What did you touch? You're back. I know. There you are. Okay. Anyway. The point was is that it's got a little, it has a little um, pull tag on the side here that allows you to pull this uh, front panel off easily to access Ooh. your orange drive, but mm. neatly hides it when you don't need to access that CD-ROM. When don't you? I mean, am well, I supposed to be embarrassed? Yeah, not by my not five and a quarter inch drive. Are quarter you embarrassed drives? by your optical media? No. If so, this is for you. If you like to live loud and proud with your five and a quarter inch optical you know media, just throw this away. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna pitch this as a, a review idea right now. Uh, hit it. Hit me. Reverse sleeper build, if that's the correct term, where we get this, we put a four eighty six system in it with a five and a quarter inch floppy drive down there. Maybe I think there's that. room for two. Let me look real quick. Well, I would have to put the three and a half inside one of those five and a quarter inch adapter. Oh yeah, yeah, the adapter. Yeah, but things. I've got one of them kicking back there somewhere. Yeah, um, I I think it fits. Oh yeah, it would fit. I think I think it fits. We'd make it fit. Uh, the only problem is, you know, the standoff. <coughs> oh, I, have, I have ATX socket seven boards. We could we can make this work. Um, It'll fit. Yeah. Uh, speaking of old stuff, my pick this week. I don't know if, if you're like me, where there's this one game. That it doesn't matter how many times you've beat it, every once in a while you just feel the call. You have to play it again. And for me, it's it's time. I've felt the call. It's time for my annual playthrough of Warcraft 2. Every year, I don't know if it's exactly at this time, but I just I feel like I have to play it again. And I'm gonna play through Warcraft yep, yep. 2. I'm going to play through Ooh. Beyond the Dark Portal <clears throat> expansion, okay. which is significantly harder. I, But, uh, yeah, Warcraft 2. It's on GOG now. You don't have to try to, you know, play it in some virtual machine or on an old PC. Hmm. GOG version and uh, pixel-perfect graphics. It's great. And that's my pick this week. <clears throat> uh, do we have a... Do you have any final thoughts, Josh, that you want to share with the listeners? Gosh, why do you always spring this upon me? I mean, it's not as if I'm expecting such loquacious emanations from my mouth. But if you've made it this far and you haven't turned beet red, well, I'm sorry. Because it's likely edited, as we all are. YouTube is a harsh mistress, and if you want to be monetized, then you make things happen. But I'm just letting you know, sometimes you should join the live stream and just enjoy the capriciousness, the audacity, the moments that are sometimes delivered. Whether or not they're good, they are still moments. So we ask that you do join the live stream sometime. It'll be worth it. And with that, we'll say good night. <laughs>